Okay, we've been joined now by UConn head coach Paul Pascaloni. Also, as a reminder that the uh, Huskies have with them quarterback Chandler Whitmer, offensive guard Steve Green, cornerback Byron Jones. Uh, coach, if you would uh, make an opening statement, then we'll open up to questions yeah. and answers. Uh, first, uh, I've been very, very blessed uh, in my coaching career uh, in my playing career to be around a lot of big league first class uh, deals. You know, as an undergraduate at Penn State, I promise you, that was a first class program. Opportunity, you know, to uh, go to Syracuse and coach in the original Big East. Uh, things were done, you know, in a big league manner. Uh, you coach for the Cowboys and the Dolphins. Things are done in a big league manner. University of Connecticut, things are done in a big league manner. I can't tell you how impressed uh, I am uh, with the job that the, this conference, uh, the American, uh, has done. Uh, Mike Oresco, Nick Carparelli, the entire staff, uh, everybody, the diligence, the hard work uh, that they've put into this, uh, and the results all the way around from top to bottom to me is just very impressive. And, and I feel uh, one more time very lucky uh, to have the opportunity to be the head coach you know, at UConn and to be uh, in this league uh, against these uh, fellow institutions and in, in, in football programs. Uh, I'm very, very anxious to get the, uh, get the team in on Thursday. Uh, very, very anxious to get started on Friday. Friday's the first day that we can actually get out on the field and practice. Uh, very anxious to see what the team looks like. You know, the first thing as a coach that you want to get done is you want to see the team and see if they pass the look test. You know, from a conditioning standpoint, from a strength standpoint. So uh, we start at the beginning in preseason camp, uh, and that's going to start with, you know, what kind of condition are we in? Uh, what's our strength level? Uh, and are we focused and, and are we ready, ready to go? We had a number of players out this spring. We had uh, a little bit of an unusual high number of shoulder injuries. Shamar Stephan had a shoulder. Yawen Smallwood, who has gained a lot of notoriety here in the last month or a couple of months as a linebacker, uh, had a shoulder. Uh, Jimmy Bennett was out in the spring. Uh, all these guys are healthy. They're all ready to go. I didn't have my hands on them in the spring. They were there watching uh, in the meetings, doing their due diligence as to what they could do, but they couldn't practice. So. Uh, even a young guy like Omaine Stevens, who's a young linebacker from Orange, New Jersey Force, had a shoulder injury. And he didn't participate in the spring. So we had a number of those things. And uh, I'm just anxious to see that group. And I'm uh, really anxious to see these 25 freshmen that we signed. Uh, they've been on campus in school. But as you guys know, the NCAA rules won't even allow me to go down in the weight room you know, to see these guys or to watch them uh, do their conditioning and to, to do the, uh, the things they do over the summer. So uh, really, really looking forward, uh, you know, to getting the team together and to see, you know, Friday morning what we look like. Take questions for Coach Pascaloni. Please just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. Pete Sunsky from Rivals. Paul, would you talk for a minute about the number of 2012 guys that have a chance to play on Sundays this year and how you're addressing the roster voids they left behind? Uh, let me make sure I heard you. The guys, could you, could you say that again? I didn't, I didn't hear the whole thing. The guys that were drafted. Yeah, a number of guys that uh, have an opportunity, they're drafted or free agents to play in the NFL this year. Yeah. How you're addressing yeah. the board. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, we had five guys uh, drafted. We had three guys signed. Ryan Worth had a rookie, rookie tryout. So we had a total of, uh, from last year's team, we had a total of nine guys who were in some type of NFL camp. Uh, in the spring uh, or preseason. So, you know, offensively it starts with Ryan Griffin, the tight end. You know, we're working hard. Uh, Sean McQuillan is a young player, very, very athletic, uh, could take, you know, some of that pressure off. Spencer Parker is another older guy in our program who has not really played much, but is very, very athletic. And I'm optimistic to Spencer. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to contribute. Uh, we've brought in uh, Tommy Myers 
from, uh, you know, the state of Connecticut. He's an in-state guy from Coventry. He's just an outstanding athlete. Um, I don't know how far he'll come, you know, in, in preseason. So the tight end position we're working hard at, I think we've got a couple of guys that could help us there. Uh, the, the, big, the big concerns with the guys that were drafted are the corners. You know, we've moved Byron Jones to corner. Byron's here. I'm sure you guys will talk to him. Uh, I think his skill set is uh, very conducive to the corner position. I think he has those skills. Taylor Mack is going to be a senior. Taylor Mack has played corner for us. He's been uh, a role player for us, but it's time for Taylor to step up. Uh, Javon Williams is a young player from South Florida in our program who was redshirted last year, who I think is going to have a chance you know, to be in that top four uh, at the position. So uh, we're not going to have the experience there, uh, but I think we're going to have some guys who are athletic. Uh, and we're going to have to ask them to do things they can do. So C.O. Moore at the Sam Backer position, obviously, he's out at Oakland. Um, I think he's listed first on their depth chart right now. I talked to him. He called me last week. Uh, so... You know, we, we've got Jefferson Oshiru, who's been in the program for two years, and we've got Graham Stewart, who transferred from Florida. He's an Xavier High School, Connecticut, Middletown guy. Uh, played at Florida as a freshman from a special team standpoint. He's very explosive, very, very fast. So I'm excited there. Ryan Donahue transferred from Maryland as a linebacker. Uh, Ryan Donahue is a pretty consistent, steady performer. Yawin, knock on wood, is healthy, and he can play the Mike Backer position. So we're going to be a little less experienced, but then again, there again, I think we've got some guys. One of the guys I'm really concerned about replacing is Ryan Worth. You know, Ryan was kind of uh, the quiet leader on our team a year ago. Uh, Ryan Worth played week in and week out, play in and play out at a very dependable, very, very high level a year ago and elevated, I thought, elevated the play of everybody around him. Uh, Shamar Stephan is back, and Shamar had a really good year last year. He's going to have to, he and Jesse Joseph, who was out in the spring, you know, with an injury. Jesse was granted a fifth year. Jesse has played a lot of football. So Jesse and Ryan are going to have to be, you know, the leaders of that group up front. It starts up front, and uh, I'm excited uh, I'm excited to see them, you know, on Friday again. So we've got some holes to fill, but I think we've got some guys that can, you know, can step in and, and step up. Yes, Des. Well, you know, we've got Tyler Bullock and we've got Alex Mateus there, and we haven't settled on who the starter is going to be yet. Uh, we're going to pick it up where we left off. You know, I'm excited about both of them. I think they, both, they can both play. I think as opposed to a year ago, where we were trying to, you know, replace a, a, a veteran in Mo Petrus. Uh, I think we've got two guys that have gained some experience, know what to do. Uh, so I think we're going to be in much better, much, much, much better. The offensive line is an area of this team that I'm excited about. You know, Jimmy Bennett coming back. Uh, Kevin Friend has been real consistent. Stephen Green has been really, really consistent. He's a very smart player. And, and helps us a lot. I think we've got a couple of good young guys up there. I'm anxious to see uh, Kyle Schaffenacker, you know, from, from St. Thomas Aquinas. I want to see what he looks like on Friday. Tommy Hopkins, I want to see what he looks like. I think those guys may be able, you know, to compete in preseason camp uh, for us, you know, and, and maybe provide a little bit more depth over there. Des. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about that offensive line. I really am. I think it's the first time since I've been at UConn that we've got these guys coming back and, you know, they kind of know each other and they communicate well and, you know, know what's expected, know what's ex going to be accepted and know, what, and know what's expected. Well, I, you know, the first year you're putting in a whole new system, so there's, you know, that's a whole new box of chocolates. And uh, then the next year you lose some key guys. You know, you lose the, the apex of the thing. You know, it's the old adage of you've got to be strong up the middle. 
Uh, and Mo, Mo Petras was, was, was a pretty experienced player. So we lost Mo, and we didn't have a guy who had really played center a lot. So that was a concern, you know, trying to identify the defense and all that. So I think we're much further. The answer to your question does, I think we're much further along. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, John. John, John Silver, Journal Inquirer. Paul, a little more broad question, but uh, there's been a lot of talk, uh, uh, Mike Resco, uh, uh, the Division Four and everything. What's your feeling? Do you feel that the American and, and the schools, and specifically UConn, is closer to the Power Five than they are to maybe the rest? And could you explain why you feel that is so? Well, I, I, I really do. Uh, I really do, John. I think that, uh, you know, I don't know much about it other than these four conferences trying to, I guess, put themselves in position to satisfy the needs of, of, of their conference. Uh, with the issues that Mike talked about, I thought he explained it very, very well, very, very clearly. Um, I think, you know, when you add teams like SMU and you add teams like Houston, you know, to your league, uh, there's plenty of tradition, plenty of great football. Uh, those teams have been at it for a long time. Nobody has to tell them how to play football, I promise you. Okay? Uh, Central Florida is an outstanding program. They'll line up toe-to-toe -to -toe and compete against anybody. Just look at the, the linemen that they brought in here. They're pretty good-looking players. Uh, so, I, I, you know, in my heart, uh, UConn has lined up and competed uh, against those teams in bowl games in, in have, has had great results. So, you know, without question, uh, you know, you know my background. Uh, we've competed at that level for a long time, forever. Uh, so I really do believe uh, that this conference is better aligned with those four. And we've tied the podium for one more for Coach Pascaloni. Coach Tim Fontenot, Daily Campus. Uh, what are your expectations for Chandler going into this year in terms of progression as both a player and yeah. a leader? Well, I'm excited. You know, Chandler is a very, very diligent guy, uh, very smart, and he's worked extremely hard uh, since the end of last season. Uh, nobody's more disappointing, disappointed at being 5-7 and seven than Chandler Whitmer, I promise you. Uh, and he's worked very hard. So I'm really, again, uh, anxious on Friday uh, when we break the huddle and run up to the ball and get to the line of scrimmage. You know, uh, I'm anxious to see, you know, Chandler uh, and the leadership part of it, the communication part of it, you know, the role of the quarterback, the consistency, play in and play out. So it's going to start on Friday. It's accumulative. You know, how, how consistent, how high a level can you perform in, rep in, rep out, preseason camp, day in, day out. We're going to hit the dog days. It'll get hot. We'll hit the dog days uh, just like any other position on the team.